here let us uh, talk about the parry design and then here you can see this is sling forces sling angle the vertical line to this alpha is a sling line this is the main plate this is the body plate and stiffener plates are there and this is the stiffener uh, height i mean stiffener to stiffener height total body height here three stiffeners are there this radius of main plate this radius of cheek plate and the pinhole diameter is uh, uh, way zero like this we can have it here you can see this is the lifted object with the four slings and a hook and this is 90 degree maximum and so on lifting pad a designs would consider the impact from vessel motion actually it's also lift to so vessel and also it's a move in the sea so we need to consider the impact from vessel motion load factors should be applied to the lifting weight and it's not simply only the dead weight of the structure to be lifted load factors also we need to apply and EPRP 2A recommends that lifts to be made at open sea a factor of 2 should be applied most of so lifting is performed by using four slings most of the time it will be lifted by four slings even sometimes three slings or multiple slings or so six slings eight slings like that different different configurations are there it is conservative in practical design to consider that one sling will sag during the lifting if you see any one of the sling might slag like that we can sag so that should be conservative in the practical design sling load we can calculate simply by equating to two times w which is the lifting weight equals the number of slings into p in the cos alpha this alpha we have seen it that's the, from the vertical plane to sling that's the angle and so we can calculate the p p is the sling load we can uh, see this is the sling load means from the vertical plane what is the angle that's the alpha angle Usually this uh, angle it will be 60 degree we will be having it with the horizontal plane. We have seen this is the paddy with the sling. Uh, it's going with, with respect to horizontal plane it will be 60 degree. This alpha is nothing but with the respect to vertical plane. This is the sling force. Like this we can see it. These are the things like ways we need to calculate the sling force. It's a simplistic way. Procedure for paddy design is expressed as follows. Check for uh, bearing stress. Bearing stress means uh, at this cross section, if you take it, we have, if you take a cross section here, uh, we will be having a pin diameter. And then pin, this pin diameter will be touching this main plate and cheek plate. So if we take the cross section, this is the main plate, then cheek plate also will be here. Cheek plate will be here. And then this is the pin pin also it will be coming like this so pin will be bearing on this this surface that's here that is a t main plate thickness and the two times cheek plate thickness that's why main plate thickness two times cheek plate thickness and in the cross section if you see the diameter of the pin that's the area so diameter of pin is also uh, the bearing area we are calculating bearing area is nothing but diameter of pin into uh, thickness of main plate two times thickness of cheek plate and bearing stress allowable bearing stress we are taking 0.9 times fy and this should be allowable bearing stress should be greater than the load so here we can come to know the thickness of main plate plus two times thickness of plate that should be always greater than the sling load divided by diameter of pin into allowable bearing stress so from here we can calculate the thickness of main plate and cheek plates can be we can properly select it here we can see the check for uh, shear stress allowable shear load is taken as uh, 0.4 times uh, fy and if you see here this plane when the uh, sling load is going like this this will be the shear plane so there will be a double shear that's why two times it's coming this t is the main plate thickness r is the main plate radius small r is the paddy hole so from this point to uh, this point to this point if you see this is the radius okay so approximately the radius minus or not then it will be like uh, uh, 
what we are checking is this distance that's a distance because this r r naught is uh, this distance so we'll be having this distance that is the this value and two times r minus r naught is nothing but the cheek plate radius here we have the cheek plate also so cheek plate radius from here then we need to consider this area also this portion small portion so this plate and this area and this area both we need to consider this is nothing but the thickness of two plane two we are putting because two times thickness of cheek plate and this is the shear uh, stress allobe shear stress so this should be more than the string load so if we from here we can come to know the thickness of a plate of resulted from bearing stress usually that will go on the design we will confirm like uh, what are the plate thickness um, selected from bearing stress requirement main plate and cheek plate we can we it has to satisfy the uh, shear stress as well so this is very clear this is the shear area and uh, shear area of main plate related to that and shear area of the cheek plate related to that that and this is the allowable shear stress so radius of main plate radius of uh, pin hole and radius of cheek plate these are the things we can uh, check for it so this if satisfies this check then we are checking for the shear stress it's a double shear this one plane and here also one plane that's why two times it comes so in practical design a uh, horizontal force uh, five percentage of static uh, sling load should be applied simultaneously with sling load that means like uh, out of plane we need to apply 5% sling load along with the simultaneously sling load and so for in plane load as well as 5% uh, out plane load we need to simultaneously apply uh, that's the design requirement parry design should be provide sufficient clearance for easy installation here you can see this is the cycle and cycle pin then the sling these are the parry and we need to have some sufficient gap between the Parry cheek plate and a shackle. So, this kind of minimum 5 mm 1 by 4 inch clearance and all we need to keep it. And then, here also we need to keep the clearance that should be 1.5 times diameter should come. 1.5 times sling diameter between the sling uh, to this uh, main plate. And parry pin hole diameter should be 1 quarter inch larger than the pin diameter. Parry pin hole diameter should be one quarter inch six mm larger than the pin diameter that depends like uh, based on the diameter of pin 100 mm pin diameter we can go with even 3 mm if it's more than that uh, 3 mm if it's less than that that will be 5 mm the parry thickness would be one half inch less than the jaw width of the circle parry thickness should be one half inch less than the jaw width inside you can see this is the jaw width so compared to this complete thickness this jaw width should be uh, at least one of thickness one half inch uh, should be more that's why one by two one by four before either side it will get after radius of padding main plate should allow about one quarter inch clearance between the main plate and the sling that's what this one here <coughs> it's important to locate the padding such that the shackle pin sling clear the adjacent structural members so it should not have any clash between the stiffener and the circle so here check welding between the main plate and cheek plate thickness here if you see this one this is the main plate and this is the main plate and this is the cheek plate so here there will be a weld so this welding we need to check in the main plate and cheek plates if the welding size is w and allowable welding stress is fw so the size of the fillet will assume that it's a w and then the stress welding allowable welding stress fw then 2 pi r is the circumference into 0 0.7 w is the thickness so that's the area of the weld into stress that allowable stress that should be greater than p this is the sling load this one cheek plate thickness t and this is the total thickness so p times one cheek plate thickness there will be total cheek, uh, total thickness cheek plate plus main plate uh, it should have more than this force this side what we are checking okay so w should be greater than p p t divided by these values 4.4 
that's the 2 pi r into 0 0.07 and t plus 20 times r the required fillet welding Record welding fillet between the main plate and cheek plates can be calculated. Uh, check axial and CS stress along the section cutting through the main plate. If the section is cut through the main plate, I have distance B from the center of the hole. The section is hatch units high. Here yeah, you could see that suppose from this center of the hole at the distance B from this one if we cut cross section like this you could see uh, this is the main plate and these are the stiffeners and even you could see this a cheek plate as well that's what it's on here so access for FA that we can see this is a P and horizontal component is P cos theta. That's the horizontal component. That and the area if you see this is the hatch uh, from here to here. This a hatch and T is the thickness of the main plate. So we can see this actual area and this is the load so axial stress is load by area of bending stress we can take moment into c by i here moment we can calculate b in p into sine theta times b whatever the distance we are taking and this horizontal p my p cos theta hash by 2 is the center minus radius so minus radius is from here to here it's a hatch by 2 center and minus radius is means from here to this one this is the radius so this is the force is acting so this distance is the hatch by 2 minus radius the force is acting here right so this distance is taken this is the moment like this this is the reducing moment right so it's taken like this and maximum stress so mci c is the extreme fiber distance maximum bending stress equal to 6m by th squared th squared and that's the main plate one and the average shear stress is p sine theta total sine theta th is calculated and the principal stress at the edge of the section can be calculated axial force bending force plus square root of axial plus bending force squared plus shear squared square root of this using this formula we can find out the average shear stress this is how we can do this kind of uh, axial plus shear and combined sections so the section cutting through the main plate can be found out here in this one let us say the top side structure of an oscillator platform i might say 800 metric ton four parallels are needed to lift needed for the lift design the parallels that's the question so given alpha is 30 degree that's nothing but from this vertical plane to this sling angle sling line the angle is 30 degree and sling angle to the horizontal plane is 60 degree fy and that's the yield value of the plate parallel plate is 40 ksi and d is 6 inch that's the diameter of the pin that's 6 inch pin first we will calculate the sling loads consider one sling sags so considering one sling sags so 2w into 3 cos of this number of slings so 2 into 1600 because we need to apply the factor 2 divided by 3 into cos 30 that's that is nothing but alpha this this value so we are getting 1 2 3 2 clips so check for bearing stress so bearing stress is pi 9 times f is the allowable bearing stress so we know diameter of pin into thickness of main plus 
two times thickness of uh, cheek plate and uh, bearing press allowable bearing stress should be greater than the wrestling load so if you put the diameter of the pin then we can see that diameter thickness plus uh, main plate plus two times thickness of cheek plate should be greater than 5.4 inch so let's go with two inch main plate so if you go with two inch main plate and 1.5 inch cheek plate it becomes 5.5 that's more than 5.43 so our um, bearing stress calculations okay now let's see the shear check allowable shear stress is 0.4 times fy and you will go with radius of r as 11 inch and radius of pin is the cheek plate as 10 inch radius of main plate 11 and radius of cheek plate 10 inch so t thickness into r minus r naught plus 2 times r minus r naught the thickness is should be greater than or equal to p divided by 2 times shear stress so if we substitute this one we can see that 36.67 so that is less than 39.39.78 so it's not that the bearing counts here in this calculation we can see based on the bearing it counts this p by 2f is less uh, let's see the check for welding of cheek plates we'll assume e60 volts are used that's between the main plate and cheek plate we have seen the wall size should be greater than p times thickness of cheek plate will be 4.44 times other will be well stress plus thickness of main plate 2 times thickness of cheek plate in radius so from here we can find out that the wall size would be 0.6 by inch so use 3 quarter inch fillet walls around the cheek plates check stress at a section 11 from the 11 inch from whole center from this whole center we will take 11 inch okay so h is 48 inch we will try with 48 inch and moment is p sin theta into b and that minus p cos theta into h by 2 minus r so we are getting moment as 3782 so axis stress we can see p cos theta t times h so bending stress is 6 times moment divided by th squared so we can see bending stress is 4.92 5 percentage of static sling load that's 0 0.05616 so that creates 31 times 12 12 is the b what we have seen so sorry 12 keeps inch moment and bending stress is 6 into 372 6 m by t h squared and uh, this is a combined stress 6.42 axial 4.8 bending and 0.63 is also bending out of red bending so here at the neutral axis is v q naught q by i t i is the amount of inertia q is the first amount of area so three times v that is equal to 3 by 4 times VH that's a rectangular uh, 1.5 times our HR stress it will come right so the stress it will come like this this is 1.5 this look is 1.5 times our HR stress that's the maximum so CR stress at is 0 so maximum stress is equal to 6.4 FA plus FA by 2 plus FA FB whole square plus CR stress square also so we are getting 21.35 it is suggests that the sufficient stiffness are provided to reduce the lateral bending stress so lateral bending stress is 11.63 right so sufficient bearing uh, stiffness are provided to reduce the lateral stress bending stress the pattern design pattern is on here so this is where we can check the shear stresses was maximum stress at the pattern this is how we can design about it